It's another Tuesday and we have another episode of Digital Creativity Lab for you. Uh, my name is Sara and I'm part of Neural Love team. Uh, every week I do Digital Creativity Lab for all of you creative people out there who are each week discovering a new tool with me. Uh, and if you are joining me here today, you might be even on uh, either on Zoom here with me. Uh, with me and Victoria, or uh, you're following us on YouTube Live. So hi to everyone who's watching this on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, we will also have uh, recordings of this in case you've missed something. Uh, we have a full playlist, if I'm not wrong, with all the Digital Creativity Lab uh, episodes. And today we have something really special for you, really fun. So, you know, buckle up. This is going to be a big one. Um, just a few things before we start. You have a um, pause option, and uh, that is used uh, for when you think I'm going too fast, or you want to have a little break, or you want to dive into something a little bit uh, deeper. So if you find a tool, if you see a tool that I'm presenting that you really, really like, you can also click pause and go explore it in your uh, in your own pace and then come back to this don't don't worry it's not going to uh, change what you see it's not going to uh, put you uh, put the fast forward to when you when you're done so that's a really useful option to have i know it can speak and go really uh, fast and really quick so make sure you know that there's an option that you can use if you have any questions you can always ask them at any point either to resume a uh, question and answer uh, button or through chat. Um, Victoria is here with me today to help me uh, keep an eye on those questions. And you can also write to me in chat in YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, you can either uh, do this live option, add questions, or if that's a recording that you're watching, you've got comments below. Right, so that's housekeeping for us. And we're going to go on and describe something that we describe every time, and that is a little bit about digital creativity. Uh, digital creativity focuses on, obviously, digital tools. But it's not just about digital here. We have this uh, big field of creativity that we're uh, focusing on. So this is just a way for you to explore your new ideas or present someone else's ideas. Uh, in different formats. So these skills might be useful for you later in life as we move to a more digital and remote uh, life. Uh, so far we've done a lot and we can still have a lot in our idea uh, basket for you for next sessions. We've done some comic books, we've, uh, the, we've learned a lot about graphic design, we did uh, create our own font and just a little bit of animation and all the visual things uh, so far, even a little bit of 3D modeling, if I'm not wrong. So last time we did, um, sorry, last time we did a little bit of stop motion video, if I'm right. So I wanna show you today something that uh, is really actually summarizing what we've done last time and slightly leading us towards our new topic. So we've created a really simple stop motion video with a few characters. We had, uh, I had fruit from my kitchen, but you could have used anything that was around you that you could have animated. I did hear from um, two teachers in Croatia who tried it with me. It was really fun. And I think they're gonna be using it with, with, their, um, with their pupils soon. So if you have something that you've created that you want to share with us, make sure you do so uh, online with our numerous social media accounts that we use. So either Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or you can send it to us on our email, chat with us, millions of ways to communicate with, with us. So let's see what other people created. Here on this, um, on this web page that I'm showing you at right now, we have ideas for uh, stop motion. Stop motion video is wide area as I've said before. So we have different types of stop, stop motion videos. You've done one last time and I want to show you a few more. This is something, 
this fruit salad, salad example is quite similar to what I've done, right? So let's see how this one looks. See, it's moving fruit around, many, many frames included here. They're all climbing in the bowl. Really fun. Now let's see what else we can do. Uh, there's a whiteboard stop motion uh, video, which I know uh, one of the teachers created. So here is an example of that. It's really fun creating something with a whiteboard because you can really easily, really quickly create this illusion of motion. Super easy, erase and draw um, mechanism. Of course, our third uh, example now builds on top of this idea and uses a little bit more materials. If you remember last time, I've used some papers, some googly eyes, some office equipment. If you have that lying around, you might want to consider this version. Takes a little bit more time, but makes really fun animations. You can use this for your CV as well. I've done that when I was applying for this job with Chano and that worked magic, obviously. <laughs> So if you create your own character out of paper and tell your story with using stop motion video, it could work in your favor. It also demonstrates some really good skills that you've got. Uh, if you don't wanna make it out of paper, you can make it out of Legos. Right, this is a full story movie style. You can imagine how it goes from there. It's a really dram dramatic story, crime, crime story with Legos. And if you don't have Legos, you can always do clay morphing or clay stop motion. Really popular. You've got some uh, famous cartoons done in this technique. Uh, relatively easy to create, but can be difficult to animate because there's so many motions that you need to take into account. If you remember in one of the previous videos when we were analyzing animation, we were talking about uh, move, movements that you, uh, a bag of salt does when it, when it jumps. Right, two more examples, sticky notes, lovely stuff. Really simple to use. Another dramatic video. Listen to the sounds. This one is a little bit different, it's MIDI sounds. It's demonstrating like simple games, Tetris and similar things. You can do really simple shapes, like pixelized shapes with sticky notes. And if you don't have that, you can use um, chalkboard or humans. Using humans for uh, stop motion is called pixelization. And it's really fun, you can see here. They've added some interesting sounds, right? And the last one I wanna show you today, ooh, internet started behaving slowly, slowly, slowly. Okay, uh, this is a, a time-lapse, which is a type of stop motion video. And it shows decomposition of fruit might not be the most beautiful thing you've seen today uh, but works works really well with stop motion right I have a task for you now I want to know uh, what makes all of these videos uh, very special what moves action in those videos which component of video making we didn't mention yet so in all my um, previous workshops, there is one component that I didn't mention yet that we didn't work on. And that component is our topic for today. I'm wondering if you can 
figure out which one it is from the videos that I'm showing you. If you have an idea, feel free to pop it in the chat. And in the next 30 seconds, we're slowly gonna reveal, reveal what it is. Right, so one thing that's different in these videos is not just the type of stop motion that they're using, there is another, another component that's different. So to show you two examples, which might clear this out for you, this one. That's example one. And example two will be one with people. So many videos here, slow. Right, listen. Difference between these two videos is audio that they're using. We have so many options with audios and you can really make a big difference in your video based on what kind of audio, music, sounds you use. Right, so first one that we've heard is a popular song by Queen. So you can use, you know, popular, um, you know, pre-made music, commonly known music for your videos, but you need to be very careful about it. So this um, author here used obviously a um, sample from Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, which is fine for your creative projects, for like hobby projects, but you need to be very careful because there is a copyright that is connected to these. Um, another thing that you need to make sure is that if you include popular music uh, samples, that you give credit to those people who created it uh, on the video or you know, in the end credits, that is really important. Otherwise, you might be accused of um, you know, uh, breaking the uh, uh, authorship rights, something like that. Right, this different type uh, of sound that you can use is this first one with everyday objects that we did. It's kind of a song, but it's not a popular song. It's made song. Author made their song. Listen. Brilliant, right? Okay, so they've um, they've used their voices. They've um, uh, um, added some instrumental music, maybe they've created it themselves. So that's a lot of work, but really good to hear because it can follow the action on, on screen and it can all together create a really cool experience. You can alter the atmosphere of the video with this. Right, so we've covered uh, popular music that you can use. So samples, uh, samples that you've created. So, you know, your own authorship material. And we have sample music. Uh, these paper cuts have um, included music samples that are free to use, created by other people. You can download them, but they sound really like, you know, background music, elevator music. It works well if you are leading the action of your own video. Uh, but there is, you know, it's not going to build on top of your story. It's not going to change rhythm. It's not going to make something feel really tense if there is a tense situation. This works really short, really, you know, easy videos if you don't have that much time. Right. Two more options that you have. These are really fun now. Okay. So some sound speech recordings are something that you can do on your phone really easily. I'm sure you're aware of that, but I'm still going to tell you how to do it. Let's see how it works. This is uh, here. Uh, listen really carefully uh, how this one works. So there is a little bit of music, but mainly speech. Long intro. Welcome. 
So you see this welcome, welcome that you've just heard. In a comic that we did a few weeks back, you would just put a bubble with text that this character needs to say. In videos, in this kind of videos, in stop motion videos, you can either use bubbles, paper cutout bubbles, or you can use recorded text, recorded speech. Uh, in the app that we used last time, you remember we had a recording button. So that's an option for you if you don't have a lot of time and want to animate your characters really nicely. And the last option, last but not least, is the sound library that you can use. Listen to these sounds. It's not a recording. It sounds like an actual skateboard. And the comic element here is that they've used a video that doesn't fit the sound and sound is trying to illustrate what the actual object should be. So in my opinion, that is a really smart way of implying what your video means and what the, you know, maybe comic part out of it is. Uh, so you've heard now several types of sounds that we can use in videos. I'm gonna also teach you today, today how to create them, of course. Uh, session wouldn't be complete if we don't experiment a little bit and uh, discover new, uh, new online tools. So for today's session, you will need a laptop or something that can access a uh, browser and internet and uh, because all of these tools that I'm going to show you today are online tools. So no downloading of the apps, no actual uh, native software, just stuff you access on your Chrome, on your Mozilla, Safari, whatever you're using. Excellent news. So we're going to start with libraries of sound, you know, pre-created sounds that you can use for your videos that you can, um, you can find online, download easily. And one of the best uh, libraries for that is, of course, BBC Sound Effects. I don't know if you knew about this, but this is the most frequently used and known library of sound effects. So, for example, those guys who were doing a stop motion video with a boy who was pretending to be a skateboard, uh, they've probably used the sound from here. So let's try to search for something that you could use in your video. Uh, some of the famous sounds would be, oh, maybe we can try with categories. My internet is a little bit slow because I have so many things open at this point, but it's gonna get better, bear with me. Right, so you have number of categories depending on which topic you're trying to add sounds to. So if you have a safari going on in your um, in your stop motion video, you can have numerous sounds that are connected to Africa, for example. And you can also uh, search them easily by duration. If it needs to be a really quick sound, if you need just elephants or chimpanzees or something, let's see lions and you tell me if you recognize these sounds from movies, from commercials and some other sources of audio. That's lion. Sounds like a very tired island, uh, lion. Let's hear elephant. Yeah, this all together is just like stars in a movie. And chimpanzees. So this could work really well if you've drawn maybe a zoo or some situation with animals and you just need that kind of sound. It would be really difficult for you to reproduce that sound with your voice. So those sounds you can find here and download very easily with the button. Uh, it ends up being a file that you download and then just add to your animation. Let's see if they have cars or some transport options, right. Horn, right, we, we have different cars, like we're not five. Oh my God, 
Okay, so Land Rover or whichever car you have, you can add those sounds. Horns, of course. Oh, we've got crashes. Be aware of this sound. So let's imagine you had two apples uh, or two cars in your screen and they're gonna crash. Uh, you can try to record the sound saying <laughs> which is not gonna be probably very uh, convincing or you can just download this little file. Come on. And add that to your story. That is brilliant tool. So these things that I'm showing you right now are fantastic um, libraries of sounds. Uh, one last thing I want to show you because I know I've heard it so many times in, uh, in different movies and in, in like videos on YouTube, people also add these things. So horses, it's just a category. So you've got longer sounds, you've got shorter ones depending on what you do, but listen to this. Isn't that exactly what you've heard so many times? There's this sound also of birds, uh, some more unique sounds, which you cannot really reproduce that well, are frequently uh, appearing in our, in our videos. Right, so let's move on now. You've uh, seen the sound library that gives you loads of options of what you can use, but they're already made and you cannot change them, okay? So if we move on now to, sorry, to this online noises, it sounds weird, but it works really well. So noises online is a, a website that creates sounds for you. You've got several options here. So let's say you have a scene with uh, you've got a scene with a camp and this is going to become a scary story. So what we need is maybe sound of the forest, something like trees. There we go. It needs a bit of time to load, but it's going to happen. There we go. That's forest. And we can add some birds maybe or some um, frogs or we can make it sound like it's night, nighttime. Uh, but let's first add a bit of fire. Bonfire in the forest, sounds like a camp, right? Yeah, and now we add night sounds. Already sounds scary. So if that is the sound that you need, you can download it on this button, right? It generates a file that you can add to your animations. Maybe you decide you don't want it to sound like night anymore. You hold the button, it will turn it off. You add heat wave day sound. It's really hot now. You can add birds, you can add people, you can add different kinds of things, rain. So, you know, it goes on as you imagine your um, scene. So when, when you click on cocktail vo voices, so like people, uh, you can lower the sound of them and have them, you know, somewhere in the distance. It's your, your creativity now that comes in place. So what kind of scene you have, what kind of sounds there would be. You're trying to make this atmosphere as realistic as possible. If there is some sort of waterfall in, you know, close, you want to put a distant waterfall maybe? Maybe no people, but somewhere back, there is a waterfall. Of course, you can have, um, you know, different kind of noise on the side, maybe some thunder, close thunder, far. Let's see how this sounds.
big rain. That's the sound I made. Okay, brilliant. Let's uh, see now what they have as pre-made things. So if I close all these rains and noises. Now it's just forest and distant thunder and birds. There we go. Okay, everything is off. Let's scroll down to see what pre-made sounds they have. So if you don't have time to create the, these, you can adjust um, some of the pre-made sounds. Of course, set of descriptions of how to use this. And more noises. Uh, they're noises which other people have created, of course. So. If you don't have a lot of time or you want to focus on some other side of your other aspect of your creativity, you can always use someone else's uh, creativity with a permission, of course. So let's see what other people created. We have different kinds of uh, descriptions here. So en enchanted forest in Slovenia or starry night in Morocco or calm garden in Japan. So whichever your whichever description fits your purpose, you can try to listen to that and maybe add that to your to your sounds to your sorry um, animation. Let's see Morocco. Nocturnal garden. This is how it's called. It's loading, so it will take a little bit of time. Night garden. Sounds very good to me. So if I was making a scene with the, maybe frogs or something uh, at the night, this would be perfect. You can also download these. So that's good to know. Brilliant. So now that you know that we have um, great sounds available for you, uh, what I would like to show you is more about synesthesia. Let me share the screen once again. So next, um, our next topic is synesthesia or synesthesia, uh, which name derives from Greek and it is to perceive things together. Uh, it's been, you know, considerably weird for quite a while. It's still not well researched, but some people can hear, smell, taste or feel pain in color. So they can have different feelings of color or touch it or are connected to taste or sometimes like some would say that well-cooked beef connects to brown, uh, no, to really um, mellow sounds and uh, dark blue color, which, you know, is a bit weird, but apparently some people can feel it. So let's try to explore, explore that a little bit. Some people can taste shapes, other can perceive written digits, letters or words in color. So some numbers are connected to some color. Uh, in my opinion, that is absolutely genius way to live. Uh, so I wanted to show you how AI can help us um, so artificial intelligence can help us understand this a little bit better. And we're gonna now try to do a little bit of synesthesia by um, exploring AI's vision of colors, of sounds, of text. You remember uh, how computer understands everything that we have online. So images, videos, audios, everything turns into a code. And that code has certain similarities uh, and, you know, just by exploring those similarities and trying to present them in different ways, we can uh, feel or see or uh, be presented with different understanding of text, for example. So let's, let's see more, more about this. This is one tool that we're going to be using. So she is just typing random words. So 
song out of your letters. Isn't that exciting? I'm going to be doing that in a second. How exciting is that? So you can listen to your essays as you read them. You can listen to your messages in, in shape in like format of music. You're not going to be, you know, able to remember it that way or, you know, understand the message, but it's going to make a perfect background music for whatever you wrote. Uh, to me, it sounds absolutely amazing. So I am ready for us to create a few. And that's exactly what's gonna happen now. If you're ready, think of a message that you want to hear. Go to typeatone.com and we're gonna create music out of our words. Okay, so. Did I misspell that? Yes. Right, so I wrote, my name is Sara, I'm making this digital creativity lab and I'm excited to hear this text and music. This is how it sounds for AI, for computer. So all the most frequently used letters in the English language were connected to some sounds on the keyboard. And this is the mixture that this text has made very creative and very unique. Uh, you can also change the sound. So um, filter, it's more like flowing. What did you write and how does it sound? You know, you can share it. You can share it by clicking the button and it allows you to share the link to your created text. So if I want to change the text, I can delete this and write something else. So if this is your essay or something, and you know, the text might not be very interesting, but maybe the music will. So for example, um, let's say, talking about autumn or, you know, chemical elements if you want. This is a slow version. Let's change the, oh, this is a different filter. So it sounds different. Oh, first, first, yeah. Let's change filter once more. Oh, that's, that doesn't sound right. Maybe I'm spelled it wrong. I'm just kidding. Literally, whatever you write gives a sound. So feel free to be as creative as you want or use this tool as your background music for reading something, uh, for reading essays, for reading your schoolwork, 
and let me know how you like this. I really do adore type of tone and I use it a lot. So um, if you want, I will show you some of my creations later. That's type of tone for us, but that's not the only way you can combine text and audio. So I'm gonna show you sound site now. We might be using it in one of the next weeks in a more, um, in a more detailed way. Right, so how this works, let me show you some examples. Sound site, again, combines audio, so sounds, and text. So for example, this is a, uh, this is a text about music. Tom and Paula have never uh, shared away from the sounds of classic rock radio, but blah, 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 blah. Exercise as in, and then you, you wanna, uh, instead of explaining the sound in text, you, you can always add sound as a play button. So that describes the sound that you've just wanted to, um, explained in your text and in your, um, in your written work. So combining the text with some examples really gives it a powerful, powerful output. So for example, if you're talking about um, life stories, about tough moments, about struggle, about um, you know, difficult situations with humans, uh, you can use this tool to make it really powerful and touching and uh, for example, this is um, this example is about Stephanie Hoax, who played for help after collapsing on the floor of her uh, South Los Angeles home. And then you add this. So she she was struggling with breathing, and if you hear that, it gives you a different feeling than if you just read it. So let's try to create our own. So we, since we don't have a lot of sounds created already, uh, we can use this Bach one. And this is start time, end time, all of that. And we get, we get um, clip. So this is your clip. Listen, listen, show in line with text. You can change the text that, that appears and it gives you this a bit of uh, online code that you can embed to your websites or to any kind of online um, format. And when you see it, you click on it and it gives you the clip that we've just added. It doesn't have to be Bach, it can be whatever you pick, whichever song you have on your, on your computer or something else that we create today. So let's move on and I'll show you another um, tool. Now we're gonna move a little bit to, um, towards like math because there is a lot of math in music and if, you've been trained in reading notes, you will, um, like notation, you will, you will understand that there's a lot of math in it. It's all separated. So all the sounds on a keyboard are separated symmetrically. And if you, uh, if you wanna see a little bit about uh, that being very rational and symmetric, I wanna show you a rational keyboard. So if you don't know how to play, this might be your savior. It shows you different notes. You see this kind of looks like a keyboard and all the, uh, all the buttons on the downside, bottom side of this are the ones that go clearly well together. And those tiny ones, black ones, wouldn't go well with the harmony. And it's all based on what we've played before. So let's try to give it a sample. Oh, I need a need to. So I've played a few. It's really slow in turn, but it's moving right now as uh, to to actually reflect what I've uh, played and which sounds would go well with it. You see, I'm going now in the middle. And you can hear it doesn't sound very well. I'm making unusual choices and it's changing the keyboard as I go. So the white ones are really safe choices. The gray ones, not so much. 
and it works relatively well with um, you know creating your own new melodies but if you would go and click some of those up they don't sound that well with whatever we uh, played so far so that's how this rational keyboard works you can change it from piano the bottom to maybe flow or thermal visual you'll see how that works right now see those big ones the ones that we should be playing sounds a bit weird because i'm clicking on different choices just to play with the prediction let's try with flow flow work uh, flow looks really weird but again those big areas sound really well together and those tiny ones just don't but if we combine them it's going to change the vision for us so that we can create a sound that looks and sounds symmetrical and harmonious right so that's rational keyboard for you i hope you do understand now that there is a lot of math in this and now let's move on to another another app another web so this is called groove pizza it's really fun and it's very creative. So you, you have several buttons. This is your dashboard. You, uh, you make choices and you adjust this main bit in the middle and you play it on the bottom. Let's hear this. See that there's, a, there's our, fantastic, that's, that's our drum. So we're gonna play with drum today. And we have different options on the bottom. You see, the sound goes in circles and it's playing different kinds of sets that we set. So we can click on these buttons and extend or like turn it off or on to create different kinds of um, spaces. And it sounds different then. See, the big one is this shape on the bottom. That's the big shape on the bottom. We can turn off a few of these red buttons and it will be smaller like that. We can then adjust the purple one, not to be the first full circle, maybe a little bit less. How about this? Oh, maybe less. Let's see how this sounds now. Brilliant. Okay, let's try to add more uh, slices, more shapes, more special things, which are all on the left hand side. So I can add a triangle and see how that sounds. Wait, I want to turn that one off. Right, we have less shapes now. Let's see how that sounds. Brilliant. Do you see the difference now? You can geometrically see music that you're creating. So depending on the number of dots that you put in, that's going to make more sounds, more complete, more uh, full sound. While if you have only three in this, um, in this outer circle, it's gonna have less sound. So less effects, less drum beats, and all together you create your own slices, your own visual, um, visual manipulation of music. It's really fun for me and really interesting because you know I am a very, very visual person. So you can try some of the previously made uh, sets on the left-hand side. So we have a rock you set. You see what's going on here? You have a rectangle, which does the t -t 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 -t, and you have a different sound, the pink one. Bam, bam, and it's less frequent. So that's a rock you sound. You can also 
try some other things like Bembe, Chameleon, Billie Jean. That would be a good option to try. Jazz swing. Right, so you can continue on playing with this if you want. Easy as uh, clicking the pause button and continuing with, um, this is called Groove Pizza. So if you Google Groove, uh, Groove Pizza, you just need to enter it. There is no installation or anything needed. You just start and play with shapes. We're going on because we have more audio things that I want to show you. Right, after Groove Pizza and Rational Keyboard, we have another really cool synesthetic idea that we can try. So what if we give computer an image and we want it to play it back to us in music. If we want to do that, we would use this uh, site. Uh, if you just type image, image or video to music, Mellow Bytes, it's called, it can actually transfer your images into music. So you've got here a Twitter feed where people share what they've created with this. So let's see one example before we start with our own. This one really is fun for me because it's from um, SpongeBob and it really depicts the picture actually. Uh, to make it clear for you while, while it plays, uh, computer will break down your image into bytes, into different kinds of uh, zeros and ones, different kinds of program language, and then play it as music. It's very mellow. <laughs> Depressing. It's really funny because it depicts the picture, but I wouldn't say that's really often. So it's not going to show music that you might connect to the image, but it's going to show how it understands what your image depicts based on bytes, mellow bytes. So melody and bytes. Let's try to upload our own image. I've got several here, several options. So Neural Lab logo, uh, Digital Creativity Lab, um, first slide that we use, uh, some art that we use in the first one, uh, those animals that we were creating, impossible animals, and beetles because we're in Liverpool. So let's start with Digital Creativity Lab. Let's see how that sounds. If I just upload it and convert it. Um, oh. I've done too many as a guest. I tried this a bit earlier. I tried this a little bit earlier before, and I've just used all used up all the all the tries. Let's let's see if I can go to this page in incognito mellow bytes. Let's see if that works. <laughs> right. If it doesn't recognize my IP address, it will. Allow me to try one more time. Right, we upload. Do you want to try with Digital Creativity Lab or Beatles? Yeah, let's do, let's do Digital Creativity Lab. That's unique. You can do Beatles if you want. And you can upload your photos as well. So let's try. No, it recognizes me. Okay, in that, in that, <laughs> since that's the case, I'm going to show you quickly a few more examples on the side. This is a picture that someone uploaded. And then several pictures when you combine them, you get music. That's how computer understands pictures. It's a bit weird. Right. If you can, try this Mellow Bites and send us or share with us your, uh, your creations. That's the third step. So first step is to uh, upload your image, uh, get results and then share them either in comments or on social media. If you do share it on social media, please tag us, the Neural Love Neuro Champions and we'll laugh at it together. It can be really weird and fun. So let's move on then to two last things that I wanted to show you today. We're soon gonna be over, so I'm with this episode at least. So I wanna show you something that you can play with for the rest of the week if you're interested in something like this. This is called Band Lab. It is completely free to use. So you can see the icon here in the corner. 
Um, it's an award-winning platform for creating music. And you can start uh, by importing different things, creating loops, even plugging in your actual instruments and adding that to the mix. So it offers a lot. And I think if you like it, we'll probably more than happy to make a full episode on how to create music with Band Lab. For now, I wanna show you how to add a drum machine as our bass, for example. See, this is our drum machine now, which we can edit and you know make a little bit different, but we're just gonna go with the basic one and see how that sounds. Brilliant. You can loop it, so make a repeat. Or you can add different things to it. You can add different elements, different instruments. So you click again, you click on this um, left hand side where it says add track. And you can add either instruments. So that instrument can be a piano or something else. You can change the color of it if there are that many. And let's try and let's hear how that sounds. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't click a record button. So let's try again. That was just a random thing, uh, but let's see what we've recorded. Did I record it? Oh, I didn't record it well. I need to extend this and let's try again. behind it and how it needs to be all nice and uh, symmetric to sound well and you can always ask for help we'll we'll help you as much as we can uh, however you do know that i'm not a professional when it comes to music there are a lot of different professionals uh, and we had a really wide big and rich music history so i want to leave you with two things first one is a music timeline appspot.com that's a big timeline that connects all the music that we've ever created. You can imagine how amazing that is. So your job is to explore these different uh, genres, areas, times, uh, artists. And if you go to rock, you can find Queen here, Elvis, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Pop, you see Beyonce on the bottom, Lady Gaga. If you click on Beyonce, for example, you know more about Beyonce, no, not that. Sorry. What you want to do is click on pop, 
just pop. So this is the timeline of history of all pop music ever. And then you have subgenres of pop. So contemporary, 90s, uh, 80s, 60s pop. So whichever you're interested in. So for example, 60s, 60s pop. Let's see what we've got there. We've got Beatles. Again, taking us to Play Store, but you can maybe click on Agatha Franklin. Let's do Agatha Franklin. So as you explore, it narrows the timeline into new different things. So let's try to type in the search above. Uh, what? Queen. And it's my favorite band. You wouldn't, you wouldn't <laughs> recognize that, would you? Um, so Queen in this timeline has a really big chunk. It can show me each, each individual album and, and how well it did. If I click on the button, it takes me again to a place where I can learn more about it or listen to the album. That's the one that I know I'm leave you with, something that you can explore on and on. New musical inspiration for all your sounds and everything you're creating. Explore different genres. You don't know what you're going to see. Maybe something you really, really like. Uh, and then the second thing I want to show you is Radio Guard. So this is a radio earth map sort of so when you hit, when we hit play we are now listening to radio in Dubrovnik in Croatia but you can also zoom out and click on a different location Northampton this is radio in Northampton you can also explore on and click somewhere else Let's find what's going on around Liverpool. If I'm clicking right, yes, this is Liverpool. And you can also go and find something really far. Sorry, my internet is kind of playing with this. Things. Need to give it a second. Right. So let's try somewhere far. Where are we? This is called Radio Garden. <laughs> right, I hope you do like this. This is gonna take you all around the world with different stops uh, to listen to radio uh, and some really interesting uh, places on earth so it's all in real time and you can catch whatever news they're listening to in Australia or whatever you want to go if there is a place right now that you want to go that you cannot go due to COVID uh, you can make your lives a little bit colorful and you can make your everyday life more like that place by listening to their radio so that's a conclusion to my um, session for you today uh, where we, oh, that's a conclusion, sorry, to my session today. I'm trying to put on a presentation um, about audio. So until the next time, I want you to play with sounds and music and maybe try to explore this idea of synesthesia. And till, you know, next week, you can share design with us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, and, you know, tag us on your post. Uh, our accounts are usually connected to NeuroChampions or Neuro, Neuro Love. And if you like this workshop, I would really appreciate if you would scan this QR code on the side and put your rating in. Uh, it would really help me to know what you want, what you would maybe like more. And that way I'll design new episodes for this uh, Digital Creativity Lab. I will see you all next week. And I hope you have a nice creative uh, week and weekend in front of you. If not, make sure you go back to YouTube and find new inspiration in our recordings. See you next week. Bye.